I heard Mr. Phillips on the on the line. Patrick, are you there with us? I'm here live. You're here live. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just walked in the door, of course. I just came from the hotel. Terrific training class going on there. Uh, as you know, uh, Eric, we've got uh, a terrific trainer, one of our yep. licensees, Cynthia Anderson, who comes in and does this training for us, and she is just fantastic. Uh, that is so good to hear. Uh, just tell us really quickly, what were you doing up there at the training class today? You know, I uh, actually kick off the introduction to medical marketing because, let's face it, uh, the hardest part of building any business, of course, is getting clients, right? How do you get started? How do you get people to pay you for what you're doing so you can start making money? And so I kick that off uh, usually right after lunch, and uh, it is a... Uh, it's a session basically that just changes people's thinking completely. Because Eric, as you know, this is this is not marketed as most people would think it would be. Correct. And, uh, and so we, we just change their paradigm completely as we go into that marketing and get them tuned in to the best way to reach doctors. Yeah, that's right. It, it, it really is amazing about uh, how and what we do here uh, as talking about marketing because you know the last thing we want anybody to walk away from today is that they're having to go sell their business or sell do anything else there that they consider to be selling so folks I want we want both Patrick and I we want you to sit back really enjoy this uh, we have a, a way of communication with you there are there's the question box there that you should see in your go to control panel go to webinar control panel panel that's where you're able to ask us questions and so we really want you to take advantage of that so Patrick let's just get started here uh, today we're going to actually be talking about live training and through this I've kind of posed it a little bit with some questions here and you know I'm just going to ask you real quickly what is this training all about well basically here's what it boils down to and let's be honest folks we we know that in five days even eight hours a day sometimes nine uh, we can't convey all the information that you need to completely understand this entire industry. That would be impossible, right? So what we do is we've figured out a way to condense just the information that you need to know to get your business started and to get your first client. Because, uh, Eric, as you know, if we can teach people to get that first client, it's all uh, downhill for them. Uh, in fact, we've had a lot of these tell us, look, I just did what you taught me in this training to get that first client and, and I didn't have to do any more marketing. So, exactly. So that's the focus of that whole week is just to get you enough information to get you out there, get you that first client and get you going. You know, I can hear people say it. And I, I, I went ahead and posed this question up here I, and I said, okay, Patrick, uh, so I'm going to go sit in a class for five days. What in the world am I going to learn there? It, it, it sounds like the clock is just going to barely tick as I go through five full days of training. Well, if it were just about uh, medical billing, it'd be pretty boring. <laughs> if it were just about uh, actually just marketing, for example, it'd probably be not be enough information as to what you need. Fortunately, we have uh, a system, don't we, Eric? I mean, we figured that out. That's why we call ourselves American Business Systems. Exactly. And that's really what we, we start off with, you know, on first day, Monday morning. We talk about uh, this design, this, this image here, and... Uh, why don't you kind of just share a little bit about what this this is telling us here in this one graphic here? Well, first of all, let me tell you that we're we're actually certifying people in this training. Uh, people ask us, uh, is there some kind of a certification I need about coding or billing to be able to do the billing for doctors? Well, uh, yes, and and we're the ones that can give you that certification. You become a certified medical revenue manager, a CMRM. You can put those letters after your name on your business card, on your website, because it is a certification from our organization uh, to, to you to give you the ability to go out there and tell doctors that, yes, I've been trained. Uh, I am a part of a nationwide network that is the nation's largest network of independent medical billing companies in the United States. We do... Uh, millions of claims every year for thousands of doctors from coast to coast and we collect millions of dollars in revenue for those doctors that they would not have otherwise so that's what this chart is all about here basically illustrating that folks we're not just going to talk to you about you know electronic records by itself or reimbursement from insurance companies or receivables from patients 
we cover every aspect of the revenue cycle for a medical practice, and uh, that includes marketing, teaching the doctor how to build their practice. It talks about coding itself, and we have a, a ways to uh, uh, teach you about the coding, and of course the payment options that patients can use to pay out their bills. So all of that is a part of that revenue, and we we cover that in five days. Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and I put up here. Uh, on this screen, just a, a quick overview of some of the topics that are actually, you know, discussed during this week. I mean, we've got an overview of medical billing. We certainly talk about the iClaim and the EMRX system. Uh, we talk about what things, you know, people think about as what's really going on in the medical business, like meaningful use. Uh, we talk about the feature of the electronic medical records. Uh, we do a demo. Uh, we show you how to do the demo request. Uh, the introduction to marketing, as Patrick just just mentioned there, and then we could go line by line here, but folks, you can see here that there's a lot of things that are covered in this training class, uh, and some of the things that we're actually going to talk about today on here, we'll try to peel back the onion, so to say, just to kind of just, just sort of whet your appetite enough for you to understand what's really going to happen in this training class. Patrick, it, it is is inevitable that on Friday at the end of class, 100% uh, of the students that come through here, 100% of the participants and the new biz medical billing business owners always say, this is a, this, I got more information out of this class than I even expected. So folks, there's just no way that Patrick and I, even in the next 45 minutes, uh, try to convey everything about uh, what go, go, goes on in this particular training class. Yeah, and it's so uh, in-depth, really. We do cover so much information that people wonder if they can retain it all. Well, the answer is no, you can't. Uh, so we have ways of helping you retain that. We have a training manual that uh, we uh, show you how to mark up with little tags and highlights and notes. And then we also give you all of the slides in every PowerPoint presentation for every session is included in that manual. And at the end of the training week, you walk out with a set of DVDs that is the training uh, that's been recorded, of course, in a previous uh, session, but it's all the data that you got during the, the week. So you can review that. You can use it to train other people. You can show it to your spouse. Uh, you can curl up with some popcorn and have a, you know, a movie, a movie night. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's, that is funny. Eric, hey. now you, you probably don't realize this, but I turn on my webcam and I feel very alone up here. Oh, uh, hey, let me turn mine on here. I've got mine. Uh, hopefully you can see me as well. Uh, okay. I, 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 I brought mine up here. That hey, way. Look, you uh, have the same shirt. Yeah, we sure do. There we go. We, we kind of dress alike. Folks, <laughs> hey, one of the things that we want to show you here is is this. I think I went, went one just too far here, uh, and that is what we can do here with American Business Systems, you're going to learn how you are part of the nation's largest independent group of medical builders. I'm going to get that screen back up over here. Let me see if I can pull this over here just real quickly and, and show that to you. And yeah, you know, Eric, while you're doing it, let me, let me say this. People ask all the time, well, how am I, who have maybe no background in the medical field or especially medical billing, I have no training whatsoever. Right. I know nothing about this industry at all. I don't know anything about doctors except that I've been to one myself. And how am I going to go out and position myself as somebody that a doctor wants to turn their billing over to? Well, first of all, it's because you can position yourself as a part of our network. Now, remember, I just told you that we do uh, thousands of claims, millions of claims every year for thousands of doctors from coast to coast. If you position yourself in the correct way as a part of our network, you don't have to look at like somebody who just opened an office and you know is working out of their spare bedroom, uh, although most of our licensees do <laughs> work out of their home. Uh, and and so that's that's one of the reasons why our licensees feel very comfortable going out. We teach them the right way to position themselves. That's very important in the marketing. Yeah, and, and if we look at each one of these, Patrick, I'm, I know that you and I personally have talked to each one of these people here, and this yeah. is just a small uh, sampling of folks uh, that have come from all different backgrounds. I mean, if, if we start from our left to our right here, I mean, we start over here with Tierney Martins. I mean, this this gal was just a, she was a stay-at-home mom working uh, with her husband in their business. She didn't know anything about medical billing, but has grown a huge medical billing practice there in 
Northern California. Now, I just heard Eric from our support department last week that she had reached her her goal of 60. Yes, six zero doctors oh, that she does the billing for now. So she has a whole staff of people. She has an office that she rents and has opened up a commercial office space. Now. Uh, there's other licensees here on the screen that I'm looking at that have not decided not to do that. They've decided right. they ride at home and, and work from home and yep. just manage it themselves. And so, folks, when you become part of the – one of the things you're going to learn here during the training week is how you're going to be connected with these folks here because each one of these people have their own specialties. Uh, isn't that right, Patrick? I mean, we've got folks here that really specialize maybe with podiatrists or – um, durable medical or, equipment. Yeah, durable medical equipment or cardiology or uh, just regular family practices. Uh, Geriatrics, uh, surgeons, uh, yeah. Uh, and it's funny, Eric, because I don't think any of them picked that category. That no? was just their first doctor that they ran across that they actually engaged with and then signed up. And then that doctor, of course, is going to give them referrals probably to the same type of specialty. So it, it, it almost be, you become a podiatrist billing specialist, uh, you know, accidentally. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that these folks do know, Patrick, and that is this, what we're showing you here on the screen, and they know that on average, a doctor is going to have around 34% of what's called rejected claims. Now, rejected claims equals no money for the doctor. Let's just put it, let's just put it down brass tacks there. So, yeah. you know, we, we can speak as, as layman here. Folks, if you, if you understand this, just imagine that you you have a job and uh, you're making a hundred dollars an hour supposedly, but on average you're only getting paid uh, what's that? Uh, just under uh, thirty, just over thirty four percent less than that hundred dollar. So you're making what sixty four, sixty six dollars there? Yeah. Yeah. They, so they could be earning maybe up to as much as ninety eight dollars because our nationwide. A rejection rate is, is less than 2%. Right. And so these folks, this is one of the things that you learn during the training class. You're going to learn what things that, that, that are facing doctors on a daily basis, and this is one of them. You know, one statistic. Oh, go ahead, Patrick. Eric, I was just going to insert this, that, that, that I guarantee you that most doctors don't realize that they have that big a rejection rate. Right. Their office manager or billing person is probably not, not even aware of it themselves, maybe, uh, they're certainly not going to tell the doctor in some cases uh, because that's a lot of money left on the table. And they don't have time in a doctor's office. The staff doesn't have time to go back and research why that was rejected and resubmit the claim. So it ends up being lost money, just lost money for the doctor. Yeah, you talk about lost money. And one of the things that I alluded to when I got started here on the, on the webinar here today is this, Patrick. And this is incredible. And uh, it, it take a little bit of time to un help us understand What's about to ha happen here, October first, two thousand fifteen? We're, we're talking, you know, we've got a, we've got another training class coming up here in August. Our next one is September, the last week of September, the first two days of October, right when this is going to happen. Yeah, the government set a date. Uh, actually, it was supposed to be last year, October first of last year. Remember, they they moved it out to this year. Right. Uh, but at this point, it's pretty well set in stone that on October first. They will be using new coding system. Uh, it's called the ICD-9 system right now. It'll be the ICD-10. Uh, that's the International Classification of Diseases uh, that the, the the World Health Organization came up with these codes. And right now, it's uh, you know about 16,000. Well, it'll be over 70,000 with the new ICD-10 code. So the doctors are kind of panicking. They don't know how to get prepared for that because they don't have full-time coders on, on staff, of course, to figure that out for them. And look, this article came back out in June the 25th, so we're just talking last month here, Patrick, that it, there's, a, there's a survey that went out that 62% of all doctors are not ready, not ready come October 1st. That's, that's scary. Now, uh, it's because Medicare uh, is going to pay based on the accuracy of the codes. They have said that they're going to give some leniency maybe for some period of time for some doctors, but believe me, the doctors are panicking. And Eric, I just read that a lot of doctors have actually uh, gone to their bank and opened up a line of credit because they're afraid that their cash flow is going to drop drastically because of ICD-10. Well, here's one of the things that 
not only you learn that during the training week, but what you learn here is the solution for that particular problem. And it's everything that we're seeing right here. We're seeing iClaim, we're seeing EMRX, we're seeing a patient portal. Patrick, you and I have done an entire webinar on just the solution, breaking down this uh, very systematically. But, you know, th this is what's needed for doctors to avoid that upcoming day here. Because, folks, if you see here to the right, that little screen there, and I'm going to point to it right there, you can see where it says ICD-10 search. We're, we're already there. So we have that available. You can imagine, you can walk into a, any doctor's office today and let them know that you're ready and you're there to help them make that conversion. Yeah, in fact, Eric, we're one of the few companies out there uh, technology-wise that have actually taken the time to put all of those 70,000 plus ICD-10 codes into our system so the doctor doesn't have to look anything up in a book or anything like that. They don't even have to understand the codes because the way our electronic medical record system works is it guides them through asking the right questions to the patient and at the end it'll even suggest which codes they should be using right. for that particular diagnosis. Yeah. Exactly. Now, Patrick, I know a lot of people that are on the call and some that will listen, you know, later on and watch this later on, they're a little concerned about, I guess, learning that first, how do I input a claim into the system? Now, I know that we start off on Monday mornings of actually getting their hands dirty on, what I would say dirty, getting some hands-on train of explaining them how this is converted and right here to the to the left here, we're showing some actually some hands-on training that they'll actually go through. Yeah, we bring the laptops in first thing on the first day because we want people to realize that not only is our system the leading edge technology that's out there and has all of the things necessary to help the doctor with their revenue, but we want them to realize that, hey, it's not brain surgery. It's not that hard. Medical billing can be simple if the software is written in a user-friendly manner and has all the features in it that need to be there to scrub the claims clean and make sure they get through the clearinghouse. Yeah, so what, what we'll do, this thing that's here in the middle, it's, it's the old, what you would think the old system of filing a claim. Patrick, you and Linda remember when you guys used to type this out on a typewriter yeah. uh, and uh, send that off, but what you're going to be doing is just looking at the patient's name over an I claim and then actually putting that information in and it will automatically search for that patient and then you're just basically putting in the codes there that the doctor has given you. As Patrick said, our system will actually help coach the doctor on which, which codes that they need to actually input there by suggesting the proper codes, but that's the doctor's responsibility. They'll get that information to you in which you data entry that into the iClaim platform here. And if they have questions about codes on a particular procedure uh, and diagnosis, uh, they can come to you because we've made available to you, our licensees, over a hundred certified medical coders. That's right, we've got the certified medical coders ready to answer the questions about the coding and to look at the codes that the doctor is currently using and show them what they should be using because, Eric, a lot of people don't realize that doctors just kind of came up with these codes sometimes out of a book in the past and they're not accurate. They may be undercoding, for example, and not billing for the amount of money that they could be collecting from the insurance companies and Medicare because they just are using the wrong codes. So we right. have all that. Yeah. Okay. So now, with that said, I put this statistic in here. Now, Patrick, this is incredible because there was a survey that was done by Black Book Rankings just last year. These are their findings. These are not American Business Systems findings, but did you uh, know that 89%? I don't see it. Uh, yep, here we go. 89% okay. <laughs> of all the physician practices agree that their billing and collection system needs upgrading. Uh, now, think about that for a moment, Eric. What a window of opportunity for our licensees. Because right. if 89% of all doctors agree that their system is not what it could be, we can go in there with a very simple solution. Since ours is cloud-based, there's no software to install on all the computers and make sure it's all connected correctly. Any computer in the doctor's office that has a connection to the internet, mm -hmm. a browser, uh, like most people are watching this webinar on right now, 
they simply go to our login page and log into the system. And our licensees are doing the billing from anywhere, anytime. So uh, I think, Patrick, I think what uh, what this question here, you know, just both do, do people know this? I think a lot of people think, well, the doctor already has a billing system and they probably already have an EMR system. But we're going to show you another one here in just a moment that you know, doctors are actually looking for a combination of these and they're actually running two separate systems already. But with this high statistic, I mean, folks, this is, this is again, this is not American business system saying this. This is a, a third party uh, group here called Black Book Rankings. They're the ones that did these surveys. But with that, what you're going to get here with our training class are certified instructors. Now, Patrick, you remember probably sitting down. Uh, I know you like just to get <laughs> almost eyeball, eyeball level with everybody when you're, you, when you're doing some teaching. Um, you are one of the few CEOs that I really know, or even founders, founders of a company that actually likes to get in and work with the class. Tell us a little bit about what you did here, and then again, kind of what you did today. Well, here I was actually showing what we call the uh, iDocs Now system. This is our online document management system, and I love this system so much because we use it in our own office. As you know, Eric, any paper that comes to our office is immediately scanned into this cloud-based system and we can search those documents in the future by any keyword we wish. Mm -hmm. uh, so it eliminates all paper. We shred literally everything that's scanned into this system. Alberto's got a great question here. Some of the figures that we were just showing you, uh, he asked, well, how old are these figures that you're presenting? Uh, Alberto, these, 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 uh, re these uh, percentages, these statistics, just came out at the end of 2014. So they're just you could probably say just about six months old at the, at the most. So these are very, very uh, real new uh, statistics that have actually just come out here. So that is uh, very and interesting. That you we update that. those uh, on a regular basis. Uh, yeah. One of the features of our support on the back end, once you've gone through our training, is that you have access to our licensee support website. And on that site, we have constant new postings of new things uh, to keep you up on what's happening in the industry. So we don't just abandon you at the end of the week's long training here. We continue to teach you. Eric, I, I bet there's probably, well, there's more hours of training on our licensee support side than, than during oh. the week. There's and more than 50 hours. hours of training, maybe 80 hours out there. No doubt. Now, let's talk a little bit about the instructors here because I want you, to, you, you mentioned earlier about Cynthia. Uh, throughout the, uh, the years that you've been doing this, you, you've actually have used ABS licensees, other licensees that have actually been on webinars just like we're doing today. Tell us a little bit about Cynthia. Yeah, Cynthia came through our training in uh, the latter part of 2007, so what is that, eight, eight years ago, right. and uh, she had no background in the medical field whatsoever, like you said earlier. She uh, wanted to get out and uh, try to start her own business, so she ran across us on some website, inquired about it. Uh, invested with us, filled out the paperwork, came down to the live training workshop and set through that week-long training, just like she's now teaching. And Eric, she went out and built this business to a huge business. She now has a commercial office space. I think she has three people now working with her, doing right. billing for a dozen or more doctors. And she is loving it. Uh, her husband is a stay-at-home dad with the two boys. Uh, and, and they just love the situation that lets her have the free time uh, you know, to spend with the boys as well, and yet make a very nice six-figure income. Oh man, there's there's no doubt that that's what she's doing. And, and again, she was just sitting in one of these chairs just like six, seven years ago, just like what you said. And so I, and, I have no doubt that some of these other people that we're seeing in this class or other classes that you'll be actually utilizing to do some uh, also been some instruction. Yeah, and of course, uh, Eric is one of our instructors as well. Uh, we have Jordan Ransom, who's on in the middle picture there. He's actually helping somebody there with some hands-on stuff. Uh, that's my son, Adam. He's the president of the company there in the upper left-hand corner on this picture. And guys, we all pitch in because we all love helping licensees to build their business and be successful. I think most of our people would work uh, with no pay whatsoever, Eric. Are you willing <laughs> to do that? I'd, I'd be glad to... Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I know I love it enough, even though I'm semi-retired. I'm here in my home office right now, for example, even though I just came back from the live training. 
I would train I would train the whole week myself if I could, but you know, uh, first of all, I'm not too old. I, I couldn't stand up there for eight hours a day. But secondly, I'm not out there actually doing the business. Right. Tim is out there running the business and knows. And of course, you, as the research and development guy, you have your hands in the uh, the medical billing field all the time and know what's going yeah. on. Uh, yeah. We have a, a support uh, manager, uh, Steve Perry, who has 25 years experience in medical billing to support our licensees. And yet we're not in, let me make that clear, Eric, we're not in the medical billing business ourselves. Our company does not do billing. What we do is train and support the licensees. And, and that might kind of move into why we can do that, even though we make money on the licensing fee, we also make money on the services that you offer to the doctors. The doctors pay a fee to access the system, for example, each month. We get a small portion of that from our technology partners because we brought the business to the table. But we would do it even if we didn't have that. And we have. We did for many years before we actually set that model up because we love seeing people be successful. It's just what we do. Well, what I like about, you know, here at ABS and, and at least what I've known and you've known with other training classes is that I think everybody here at ABS, we all pitch in somehow, whether it's setting up the tables at training, whether it's getting up in front like the three of us will do or the four of us will do, including Cynthia or anybody else. Uh, just being there at the training class, making sure everybody gets there. I mean, we are all dialed in to making sure that if you become a licensee here, we're dialed into your success, and that's what we want to do. And part of that success is learning each of these services that will go over very systematically every day from, from the, the day that you get there. You're going to have your hands on right of smack dab of learning how to do this, but now you're going to take all of these different services and utilize them to help build your business. And not only that we're just going to teach you, but we're going to show you how to present these services to the doctors. Some of these can be the best door openers that you've ever had. Yeah. Now, let's talk about that for a second because, Eric, literally everything on the screen be, could be taken off except for I claim that, that may be all you ever want to do is just do the medical billing for doctors. If right. they want to get involved in electronic medical records and they don't have a system, that's our EMRX. Uh, and we'll talk about all these others, but like Eric said, these are all – auxiliary services that you can or cannot, depending on what, whether you want to, offer these to doctors in addition to the medical billing, and they open doors that medical billing might not open. Exactly. Before we go on to some of these others, I mentioned to you earlier just a while ago that we we're going to show you some other stats here, and again, back to Alberto's question there, again, these were just about six to seven months old here, but again, 87% of all physicians are wanting a single solution for their RCM and EHR software systems. Now, I know we've got those little acronyms there, but let's talk about RCM. That's All that is is revenue cycle management. That's all that is. It's what you'll see here with iClaim and EHR is electronic health records. They're looking, 87%, Patrick, of all physicians are looking for a single solution. Right. That's Not what we're systems. All in one, written by the same programmers, uh, tied together, not just plugged together or pasted together, but it is an integral part of our system to have the electronic health records and uh, the you know RCM as well, all tied in together. They love that. So what you're going to learn here is how to position iClaim and EMRX because as far as we we know today, you know today being today. <laughs> It is the only billing and EMR system on the market that has a fully functioning clearinghouse and patient portal. So not only do you put the billing and the EMR together, there are two other components that are actually in there. Patrick, this is going to provide each of each new licensee a very unique advantage when out there marketing to doctors. Yeah, now let me touch on that, that term clearinghouse just for a second. Uh, a clearinghouse is usually a third-party entity uh, that's basically set up just to take all the electronic claims coming in from billing companies and from doctor's offices that do their own billing, and they basically scrub those claims in such a way as to find the errors that might be there working and uh, reformat them so that all of the different insurance companies get that data in the format that they wish. So that's usually something that you pay a fee for each month for each one of those claims that are scrubbed by the clearinghouse. 
Folks, we have a clearinghouse that's built in to our system, not a third party. It is a part of our system. And that clearinghouse is done within our system, so you don't have to worry about sending those claims each night in batches to a clearinghouse and then waiting for 24, 48 hours to get the claims back as to whether they were accepted or rejected. That's all tied in completely in real time uh, with our system. Yeah, and, and I love what you said. I think uh, the, the, the key word that you just said there is real time. This gives you real time access to those payers like no other billing system out there on the market can do. And we'll, we can demonstrate that to you uh, if you'd like to see that before you become a licensee. We'll be happy to do that. But Patrick, that's even one of the features that we give as part of being a licensee with us is that we actually do the demos of both of these systems to each of the licensee's potential doctor. Yeah, any doctor that wants to see the system demonstrated so they can wrap their brain around what they're going to be able to uh, do through the system, you can give them access to the system if you wish to use the online scheduler, for example, uh, or to see the real-time reports that are in the system. Folks, this is one of the magical things about our company. We do those demos live using the technology we're using here today to do this webinar, and the doctors can see and speak to us and uh, ask questions about those uh, those features that they're seeing there on the screen. We answer all those questions for you. You're just you're just there as the licensee, just kind of uh, like a little bird or fly on the wall, you know, listening in and and learning yourself about the system. Uh, now remember, we're showing you that we're going to teach you how to not only present these, but how to use each of these services during the week of training, just like these two. Uh, code Ride and AutoGuard. Now, Patrick, you kind of just rarely mentioned a minute ago about coding. Uh, I, I put over here in, in this little bubble over here that these two services are powerful web-based applications that can open up a huge market for you as a licensee to offer coding support services to medical providers. Uh, and using our certified professional coders that d does everything for you. Yeah, so let me touch on that audit guard, for example. I'm really excited about that one, Eric. When we introduced that, uh, doctors were being audited by Medicare. Well, they still are uh, on a regular basis. And Medicare can come in and say, we want to look at your records and see how you've been billing. And they will examine very carefully to see whether that doctor has overcoded. For example, there are five different levels that a doctor can bill for a patient visit. Well, maybe they're billing at level uh, three, and they should be uh, billing on, at level two. That is an, uh, an infraction that they can be fined by Medicare up to $10,000 per exactly. infraction. Exactly. I was very scared of that. This service that you can offer to doctors comes in and reviews all of those codes and produces a full report back to the doctor that they can then present to Medicare if they come in, showing that they did their due diligence to make sure that they were not uh, billing incorrectly. You know, Patrick, this is actually service, this audit guard is actually being used by some of our licensees as a door opener in, in and of itself. You know, this is this can go right along with the proposal and the the uh, the practice analysis that is done and just and it really demonstrate the power of what a licensee can actually do. And then the other two are quick collect and choice pay. And we both know, Patrick, Doctors have a, not only do they have a hard time collecting on the back end, but they have a lot of problems collecting on the front end. And we're talking about those deductibles or anything else that they have to pay. Yeah. Choice pay and quick collect can help reduce this. And then again, during this training, we're going to show you how these services can automatically help increase that doctor's revenue very fast. Yeah, uh, for example, the choice pay gives the, the patients a, a choice in how they want to pay that out. Maybe they have a balance of, say, $300. They, they don't have it available on their credit card or in their bank account. But you can, through the, through the service, offer to the doctor a way for those patients to pay out based on their ability to pay. And the doctors collect a whole lot more that way because it's set up on an automatic debit on the credit card or the checking account of the, of the patient. So they do get their money, it's just kind of stretched out over a little period of time. But since doctors only collect about half of all the money that they bill to doctors without these services, uh, we can increase this research re uh, uh, payments up to 98%. Yep. 
So that's a huge increase in cash flow for the doctor from the patient side. So hopefully you're starting to see it's just greater than just doing medical billing. We're, we're here uh, providing huge services to the doctor, many different avenues uh, to help you get your business up and going, even more than that for to help the doctor get back up to where they need to be because they're, they're certainly under the gun. Now, Patrick, just a minute ago we showed that one slide of you teaching this about iDocs now and you know you, you, you do mention how expensive it is for doctors just to keep just physical files there in their own office. Hey, you can go into some doctor's offices, Eric, and I'm sure people have done this, and you look down the hallway and yeah. they've got boxes of uh, the files that they don't know where to put them because they've run out of room. Literally, it takes sometimes two or three rooms in a doctor's office to uh, handle all those files if the doctor's been in practice for any length of time. So not only is that a, a breaking of the HIPAA rules and regulations for patient privacy, but it's very dangerous because those paper files can be destroyed by fire. Uh, it, they can be uh, swept away by a tornado. They could be stolen. Uh, right. yes, there are thieves out there that would love to have all the patient information uh, to go out and uh, you know do all kinds of havoc with people's records. So having that uh, online in a web-based, cloud-based system like iDocs now takes all those records, puts them in the cloud, and allows the doctor and their staff to access those anytime, 24-7, from any device that has a connection to the Internet. Exactly. And then plus with all of these other services that we have, and we have some more that are actually coming up here, uh, which we kind of just put into the physician's toolbox, but I think more importantly, Patrick, they get to learn how marketing and, and what really works uh, out there to actually get their doctors. Now, one of the things that what makes what, what they learn about uh, making marketing work is the actual things that you're seeing here on the screen. Uh, these are the flyers in which you get if, when you become a licensee. Uh, talk to them real quickly about how these can actually be personalized for their business. Yeah, every one of these has space for your company name and logo uh, and contact information on the flyer. And along with our package, you will get an initial supply of these uh, that you can put a you know stamp on or run it through your own printer. But then you also get a certificate for 2,000 pieces of marketing materials that we will have actually printed for you with your name and address on those. So guys, these have been professionally designed. They've been tested. They are proven in the marketplace that they work. As you can see, they all look similar so that it, it fits a, a concise way of, of making you appear to be much larger as a business than if you tried to design these on your own and you know print them out on your inkjet printer. So yeah. very professionally designed. It would cost you, uh, well, we probably spent $50,000 just designing and producing these flyers that you see here. That doesn't include, of course, the, uh, the postcards that you see there on the screen as well. Yeah, so what we're going to teach you and show you is how to use a combination of those flyers and then these postcards. Now, Patrick, a lot of people are probably thinking, oh, man, i got to do direct mail. But, folks, we, we get such a greater return on our direct mail than any other direct mail that we, that we know that anybody else does, simply because of the things that we teach you during the training class. What you need to do prior to sending a piece of mail out, that's what's so important and how to follow up on that piece of mail. But the great thing about this system is that you never have to address or stamp anything. These are online so that you can put your own message on these cards uh, and, and, and push a button and behind the scenes, this system that we have sends those cards out for you through the U.S. Postal Service. It's a physical card that the doctor or the office manager gets in the mail. And guys, in today's world, used to, uh, you would get, uh, you know, uh, one, one email and you know remember when it went ding you've got yep. mail and we were very excited about that now you get a card in the mail and you get excited because you've got 250 emails that haven't been read uh, so anyway the point is that we've learned how to use direct mail to actually help you get clients we've had licensees tell us that's all they did to get clients and it worked for them exactly so we take all of this in combination Patrick's cash crunch to cash flow book uh, there's a whole uh, DVD video uh, that talks about uh, that actually has other doctors on there giving their testimonials about uh, using ABS licensees. You got a 
complete package, very much branded, as you can see here with the iClaim logo. Uh, the same logo that we use here at ABS is the same logo that's on there, but it's not showing anything about ABS. But it's very consistent to what we have, to what you'll actually build upon your website. So really what we're going to learn here during the week of training, you will learn marketing that truly, truly works. And I think, Patrick, I think a lot of people that we know of who have been in the sales or marketing background, they come here, they go, yeah, I think what you, what you guys say, but I think there's a probably better way of going out and marketing. Um, usually those people are the ones that come back and go, I, I guess I better go back into it the way that they taught me in class. <laughs> right. Well, Eric, we actually had a prospective licensee. They weren't, they weren't in the training class. They just showed up there at the hotel. They told us they were going to show up and wanted right. to talk to us there at the hotel. So I met with them this morning, and one of the questions that the fellow asked, because he had been in marketing and had his own business, he said, well, I just want to know how you guys uh, you know, get past the gatekeeper. Well, uh, Cynthia had taken a break from the class, and the whole class was on break. She came and sat down and actually talked to this guy, and when he said that, he said, well, we don't, uh, we don't worry about those gatekeepers. We don't try to get around them. We, we get them on our side. We right. get them helping us to sell the doctor on the fact that he needs to outsource his billing. Now, we can't go into the details, of course, on this webinar, but guys, just trust us that one of the ways we do that is through what is called business networking. You'll learn how to properly business network during this class. And all that means is we're going to teach you how to make the connections in your community so that you get warm referrals mm -hmm. to doctors. No cold calling. These will right. be people that you've connected with who know doctors and refer you to those doctors. Yeah, there's nothing. I think, Patrick, if this can get mastered here uh, of really business networking, and understand we're not talking about network marketing. We're talking about business networking. We're talking about really getting out in the marketplace, building what I would think more of a power partnership with CPAs or accountants or, uh, gosh, it could just be other doctors, dentists. It could be anybody out there. You're just sure. building a good business network of folks that you can go in and rely upon, and then they, you become part of their referral list, so you're working together. But it's so nice that that person, that CPA or attorney or whoever says, yeah, why don't you go see my doctor friend so-and-so and tell him I sent you. Right. That's, that gets you past that gatekeeper. Yes, that's right. Don't don't worry about whether or not you've ever done this before. We take you from scratch and tell you exactly where to find these organizations to meet with. Some of them are totally free. They don't cost you anything. We'll tell you what to say, what not to do. We teach you the right way to do business networking. If you've ever done it before and you've heard people trying to hawk their products and pills and potions and lotions, don't worry. We're going to teach you how to do it the right way to get in with the doctor crowd in your community. Now, this next slide we're going to bring up here, I know a lot of people are going to go, Whoo, oh, you mean I can use these folks? Folks, what we're talking about here about using sales reps is not necessarily to that you, you're just going to go out there and, and hire some sales reps for yourself, but you may want to grow your business bigger. You may want to uh, create a sales rep program that can help you get yourself kickstarted because maybe you're working part-time and you want to build this on the side, and the only way to do that is to hire a sales rep. But folks, if you need to use a sales rep, we're going to show you actually how to do that properly and not just build a big sales force because folks, you know us, us salespeople, we want commissions, right? So we, you, you don't want to have to have all of your money going out in commissions. However, if that's the best way for you to build your business, Patrick, we were talking with the licensee, what was it, Friday, uh, with Lonnie, uh, one of our licensees that used sales reps to get his first client, and it's a big client. Yeah, I just got a new uh, group of doctors in a group, uh, 27 doctors in that one group. Yeah, so he's pretty excited. That came through a sales rep. He didn't find that client. A sales right. rep did. And the reason for that, guys, is it does work when you offer a commission. Look, anybody who's in sales will tell you they're in it for the money. They enjoy it because they can make a, a very high income. Salespeople are in the top 5% of earners in the United States. So when you know how to connect with these people, and uh, we'll teach you how to find them and hire them and train them and everything. They get out there working for you, you're going to have more business than you know what to do with. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to teach you how to use this wisely and how to really work, how to find them, how to train them, as Patrick said, and then uh, get, you, get your business launched very, very, very fast. 
Patrick, I, I want to throw this last one in here because we're coming up close to the end of time here, but I wanted to put this last one in here because I think this is the one that if there's a if there's a statistic that I want anybody on the webinar today that's either on here live or going to listen to it a little bit later, this one is probably the biggest one. 42% of all physicians uh, practicing hope to outsource their billing in the next 12 months. That that's that's a pretty big percentage. That's a, that's a large group of doctors out there. And Eric, that's the ones that just answered on this survey that they were looking yeah. to outsource. When we get out there and educate some of the doctors that are you know, committed to doing the billing in their own office, for example, we help them to realize that it would be foolish to continue doing the billing. They should be outsourcing it because from a money, monetary standpoint, they will uh, have a, that much more revenue coming in. So uh, even though this 42% is a nice figure, I'm glad to hear that almost half of the doctors out there want to outsource. That's a good news for all of our licensees. And that's that, those are these are 42% of doctors who are actually doing billing in-house. There are other doctors who are, who are outsourcing already and are looking for a better outsourcing solution. So you add that number to that, then you've got a lot of doctors out there, and we're talking about doctors from coast to coast, top to bottom, that are looking for uh, ways to outsource their business. Folks, the other one of the other things that you're going to learn here during that this week of training is how to properly do consultative marketing. Uh, Patrick, what does this consultative marketing even look like? What, is, what are we talking about here? Well, for example, we've got up here a practice analysis. Now, folks, this is something that we developed years ago. It started out as a one page. Now I think it's actually three pages, Eric. <laughs> right. And this is a questionnaire that will teach you how to go in and sit down with the office manager or whoever's in charge with a billing and get the information that you need to make a proper proposal to the doctor for what you can do for them. So by asking these questions, you're gathering the information to put together a very sophisticated report showing the doctor, bottom line, what we can do for their practice. Here, here's just a sampling of some of those questions that uh, people, that you'll ask a doctor. And one is, are they using a server-based system or a web-based system already? Are they, are they already on the internet? Uh, how many claims do they actually do uh, in a month's time? Uh, what are you currently spending on billing? I think, Patrick, that's probably one of the ones that a lot of people don't understand. Uh, that there are, there's a percentage of what uh, outsourcing billing companies will charge a doctor, but what I think most folks don't know is that that's actually on top of what they're paying for for maybe their billing system, for their EMR system, for their clearinghouse, as you mentioned earlier. Those are extra charges. Yeah. Updates. Uh, so you know, I've seen it as high as three thousand dollars a month just on software expenditures alone, um, and that's not even the, the percentage of what uh, they charge to actually do the billing for the doctor. So uh, there are some pretty high numbers out there that, that you'll certainly find out there. One of the things that, that they're going to get right here, Patrick, is putting taking all that information and then pulling it into this report here. This is one of the this is one of the, your brainchilds right here that you helped put together. Yeah, this is an actual example, by the way, that a licensee sent into us. We blanked out the information up there at the top and just put in some fake data there. But the point is, in this particular instance, look at this. After getting that information from them from the, through the practice analysis and helping the licensee to prepare this report, we can increase this practice's revenue by 32 percent. That's twenty-seven thousand dollars a month, or Three hundred and twenty-seven thousand dollars a year. Now that would, get, that would get my attention if I were a doctor. <laughs> well, and, and I wanted to put this up here because this should help folks understand that there's not a whole lot of selling that goes along with this. Uh, <laughs> you know, if if we can certainly with these numbers here show the doctor that we can increase their revenue by twenty-seven thousand more dollars a month. Is there any selling that you have to do? If you can sell popsicles in the Sahara Desert, uh, <laughs> you can uh, you can market these services. Yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt. So that's why we that's why we have listed up here. We're going to show you how to properly consultative market all of these services here. Then we're going to show you how to actually write and then present this proposal to the doctor. Now you see the whole package here. You got the proposal. You got the report. 
you got some of your your marketing pieces there. You got a nice flyer, I mean folder here that it all goes in there. There's a, there's a spot there for your business card. You know, Patrick, this makes someone can come out of training like they're going to do this week, pull all these numbers together, could be presenting this information to a doctor as early as next week. Yes, and because it's templated, that is, it's uh, just a template that you take out what you don't want to offer to the doctor. It's very simple to prepare these. Once you've done one, it might take you, you know, uh, half an hour or more the first one. But after that, guys, you'll just be whipping these things out. And since we are giving you lifetime support as a company, you can pass these by us and let us give you comments and talk to you about what we think is right or wrong with the way you're proposing. Now, eventually, you'll probably be all on your own doing this without our assistance uh, after a few times, but it's nice to know that we're always there to give you advice if you need it. And also, one other little tidbit here, one of the things that we don't talk about a whole lot, oh, my, what is uh, what happened here? <laughs> well, Looks like it crashed. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. One of the things that we teach you that we don't talk a whole lot about is how to use trade show booths, and then you can see here... Um, that this is actually one of the trade show booths that you can lease from us. Basically, you're not even really leasing it from us. You're just you're paying the shipping back and forth, maybe a few dollars in renting this for a couple of days. But Patrick, how nice would it be that you set up a booth and you actually have the doctors actually coming to you during a trade show? Yeah, folks, we'll find we'll show you how to find these trade shows. It doesn't actually have to be a medical trade show either, does it, Eric? It can be no. an auto show or a home and garden show or a women's expo because Doctors are human beings. They go to these type of things. We're going to show you how to engage with them. And like Eric said, they come to you. You don't have to look for prospects. They're there. <laughs> exactly. And then the last thing that most folks need help with is actually presenting the information to the doctor. And this is, this is invaluable because literally people can come out of class this Friday, work with a doctor the next couple of days. We could be doing a demo for them in the next week. And... These people may not have ever talked with a, a podiatrist or a cardiologist or any, but we have. Yeah. We say, and so this is where we help you finish this up. And like Patrick said, out of every two demos that we're doing, we're closing one of those. So that's 50, better than 50% of the time that when we get a doctor to a demo, you've done everything you need to do with the proposals, everything you need to do with the report. We're presenting them to the demos. It's hard for that doctor not to say, mm, I don't think I need your need, need Well, we, we've heard him say, to, in fact, before we were through with the demo, some doctors have said, okay, I've seen enough. But what do I do next? How do I get started? <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's what that, the guy with Lonnie did. That, that's exactly yeah. correct. And then lastly, you're going to learn on the last day, as Patrick already mentioned, how to work with our support group. And that's if you need help with the proposal. Uh, and I know that Steve Perry, what a great asset he's become for us here at American Business Systems. This yes. guy's had 28, 30 years of experience in medical billing. Uh, there's probably not a question that can be asked of him that he can't answer. Uh, plus, not only him, but we've got implementation specialists. We've got folks that will help you get going here on every level that you need here with our support level. So, pa pa Patrick, actually, you know, this is everything that they're going to learn in five days that we crunched in in just an hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a summary there at least. So yes, and, and all the services are covered. Uh, folks, again, we call ourselves American Business Systems because it is a system that's been developed over the last 21 years. It works for people who follow our system. The system works for them and they build their business. Uh, Patrick, as we, uh, as we kind of close out here, because we're in the middle of the training workshop, because we know that any of our licensees at the end of this workshop can actually ask for their money back. Why don't you talk about that real quickly? Yeah, I came up with this a few years back. As you know, Eric, uh, at one time we were uh, not offering any kind of guarantee, just like most companies don't for these live type webinars, uh, seminars. But we decided that if, if people really want to know what this is all about, we've got to convince them to come down here and experience it. And once they do, they realize that that was a great decision. If for some reason, any reason, somebody thinks it's not right for them, for any reason, they can simply ask for their money back, and we give them 100% of their licensing feedback. Now, they have spent a little bit to get here. Uh, we feed you while you're here, basically uh, breakfast and lunch at least. And then, of course, you, you have some hotel costs. But 
really, folks, it's a very small investment to find out whether this is as real as we say it is. Mm -hmm.